these patients in a small number, as you've said, when given a drug, actually went into complete remission. Now that's unusual, but what is unique in this particular study is that of the 14 that originally went on the drug, all 14 have now gone into remission. The cancer fighting drug that works. In a moment, we're gonna be joined by the Director Emeritus and CEO of Roundtable on Cancer, Dr. Mark Murphy. But first, the basic story. The New England Journal of Medicine has just published the results of a new clinical trial, a small trial with only 18 rectal cancer patients, of whom all took the same drug. The cancer disappeared in all 18 of them, a complete remission in each one. None of them had clinically significant complications. No further treatment was necessary for any of them. The doctor from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center who published the results said he knows of no other study in which a treatment completely wiped out the cancer in every patient. Another doctor, who is a colorectal specialist, said that complete remission is, quote, unheard of. Now, as positive as this all appears to be, the study will, of course, have to be replicated. It will have to address many more patients. In this case, they tested it on colorectal patients, yet there are more than 200 other cancers out there. So there's a long way to go, for sure. But in a world of mostly very bad news, this news, is a legitimate reason for hope. One woman in her late 30s at the time went through the treatment, said she melted down when she first was informed of her cancer diagnosis. And when she finished the clinical study and they gave her the good news, her family simply didn't believe her. From North Carolina tonight, one of the very top oncologists in the field, Dr. Martin Murphy, Director Emeritus and CEO of the Roundtable on Cancer. Doctor, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Doug, for having me. I know people are always looking for tremendous hope when it comes to cancers, the, the variety of cancers which exist out there in the world. This is, sounds as exciting as anything I've ever seen, but, but it's a small study, right? It is, Doug, but it's reason for us to not only take hope, but to have higher expectations and understand a bit more about the rigorous studies that must be conducted in order to truly make advances that will save patient lives. Mm -hmm. So this particular drug involves uh, colorectal cancers, correct? The, the study involved 18 patients who had advanced cases of the disease. And what was the outcome of the regimen of taking this medicine? Doug, these patients actually had a, a type of colorectal cancer that was located and localized to the rectum. They were not really far advanced patients. In fact, they're defined as local uh, um, advanced. In other words, the tumor was the, in the rectum, but it also was associated with those lymph nodes in that general area, but not distant. In other words, there was not advanced cancer throughout the abdomen or into the thoracic cavity. Mm -hmm. These patients in a small number, as you've said, when given a drug, actually went into complete remission. Now that's unusual, but what is unique in this particular study is that of the 14 that originally went on the drug, all 14 have now gone into remission. That, as far as I know, never before has happened. That bespeaks the precision, we believe, not only of the drug that was used, this new drug that has not yet been approved, but that it also speaks of how this patient population was especially selected uh, based on the genomics of the tumor. Not only was it a rectal tumor, but a rectal tumor in which certain genes were expressed and other genes were not. In that population of patient, this truly is becoming a precision oncology instrument that's molecular in size. Now, I'm, I tend to be a skeptic after 40 years uh, of being a reporter. You said that all the 14 patients are in remission, which, which means, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a total absence of any cancer. They can't find it anywhere. And uh, that the, cannot the key, be seen. Right. And, and the key question for me is, how long have they been in remission? Is it, is it a week? Is it a month? A year? What? And that's why you said it's an early study at the beginning. 
and it is early. We're talking of about a year. Many of these patients have been on the drug for 14 months or perhaps a bit longer, but this still is very early stage. If we talk now in three or four years and these same patients are in complete remission, then one day we'll be able then to speak of cure. But right now, we have a high responsivity with also very importantly, Doug, a very low toxicity. In other words, the toxic side effects of this drug, the profile is such that the, the, uh, the untoward aspects were manageable and modest, not serious or themselves life-threatening. And, and I would imagine that given that scenario, the, the alternative of undergoing, what is it, chemotherapy or radiation therapy uh, and, and surgeries, uh, uh, just remarkable. What a remarkable difference. Doug, you're so right. Let, let's think about the patients with a diagnosis of rectal cancer locally ex extant, in other words, in that region of the rectum. They're going to have to have extensive surgery followed by irradiation, and then perhaps three years of chemotherapy. Those treatments for that disease localized in that part of our anatomy will change the quality of life of those patients, even though an appreciable number would be spared death from cancer, their quality of life will never again be the same. Right. Whereas, if this drug, if this drug over time proves as we have a right now to hope that it will, all of those um, side effects of surgery and radiation and toxic chemotherapies will have been avoided, as well as, of course, the attended financial cost to say nothing for the emotional and psychological. So it could be a, a significant advance. Yeah. Without getting too much into the, the uh, scientific details, tell me how the drugs work. They're, they're not dissimilar yes. from monoclonal antibodies, which I know, for example, were widely available to combat COVID in, in Florida. That was the Governor DeSantis's mantra, the monoclonal antibodies, right? Well, this drug does work in our immune system or via the apparatus that endows each of us with our immunity, that tells me myself and that recognizes anything else as foreign. That immune system is extraordinarily complex, which enables us to live the healthy lives you and I now are. But if we're able then to train and awaken certain aspects of the, of the immune system in a very selective and programmed fashion, do I mean at the genetic and and molecular levels, absolutely. Those cells are endowed with the capability of recognizing non-self, namely a tumor cell, and once recognized, they then have the opportunity and ability to actually form killer cells, natural killer cells, that will then go and destroy that um, miscreant mm -hmm. tumor, mm -hmm. so that Yes, these, this drug in particular awakens a very special set of those cells whilst dampening others. It's an accelerator as well as a brake, mm -hmm. and that has to be done in a very orchestrated fashion. And when it does, patients here had their tumors entirely resolved. Did so, I say cure? No, but they are they're no yeah. longer a, a, a visualizable. Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.